Two minute, two minute warning to our first four runner sled. It's the and final race weekend of the BMW IBSF bobsleigh and skeleton World Cup season. We are in Lake Placid for the season finale and midway through the final race of the year for the women's skeleton. Hello everybody, welcome back Martin Haven with the IBSF TV crew in Lake Placid watching the action with you. And after 33 sleds started the first heat, 25 fastest go through into heat two. Now this is not just a World Cup race, it also counts for the Pan Am Championship. Lying in the place after the first of our two runs, Belgium's Kim Marmons. Marmons in second place in the overall battle for the Crystal Globe, potentially under threat from last year's World Cup champion Tina Herman. But Herman is a long way back in this race, too far back as it turns out. A former World Cup champion in the Olympic season, 21-22, Kim Boss, is now leading the standings. And now that she's made it safely through into the top 25, cannot be beaten, according to my maths anyway, which is not official for the World Cup title. But she could be beaten to gold. She might well be beaten to gold. In fact, I'd be quite surprised if she's not beaten to gold, although she is only 800s behind the first heat leader, America's Misty Rowe. Bush World Champion blasted out the fastest start in the competition and the fastest run, and still has things to tidy up. Well, there is only 800s in it, and actually with the experience of Kimberly was here, as everywhere else, that could be a factor. Kim Marmon's 1500s back in third. Kate Junlander not out of the medals, only 1200s out of bronze. What about Jacka Pfeiffer? She's only 1500s out. That could all change. And Tina Herman, well, to hang on to third in the overall rankings with Valentina Margalio in seventh, if Valentina doesn't drop, Herman needs to be ahead of Kelly Delka, 12th or better, just to take bronze in the season standings. Outside the top 25, you face Michelle Tokan, as well as Yulia Erlacher and the rest of the field. They will be watching the final run before watching the medal ceremony in the plaza by the new administration building and then clearing off down to Zigzags, the legendary pub in the centre of Lake Placid. The legendary party. Air temperatures warmed up a little. It's gone from minus 11 this morning to minus 9 now, so positively spring like, but the ice temperature minus 9.5. It's as cold and hard as it was earlier on. There's Hallie Clark, the new young world champion. Suzanne Kreyer, Hannah Neiser. Everybody in the German team, actually, apart from Jacka Pfeiffer, really struggling for pace here. German men didn't have a good time of it either. Well, we've got 25 sleds going through into our second heat, the final of the campaign. 
and of course the last chance to really get a race in on this track before at top level before the world championships next year so Kimberly Boss leads the points, Kim Myerman's in second, Tina Herman really struggling, and Valentina Margaglio, if she remains in the top seven and Herman doesn't improve beyond 12th, she's currently down in, where is she now, Tina, what did I say, 18th place, 16th place, then it will be Valentina Margaglio who takes the Crystal Globe for third place. Further back, Halley Clark just outside the top 10, should probably move up because uh, at least one of those in the top 10 teammate Mimi Raniva is not here. Ali Clark probably won't mind if she's not in the top 10 because she is the world champion, so you know, whatever. Ah, oh, there we go. I just uh, thought everything had broken. It went very quiet and nothing moved. Now then, here is our start draw. 25 down to one. They go last to fast. Not quite last, but 25th down to first. And Song CG are. Rookie Slider, our debutante in the World Cup, will be first off. And her teammate, Chu Yanqi, is also in the field. Last to go will be Mystique Rowe. Song CG gets us underway for China. Her first ever World Cup outing. It is here in late class in the track that she has grown up on. Well, she's only had 14 races before this one of any kind, officially. 565, 30, 568 in a second. And again, just getting dragged along that wall from three down to four. And the Chinese pitching program, Dirk Matchens, not here in Lake Acid this weekend. And as ever, the team seems to do it a little better without him. I'm not sure if that's a hint or something, but I'm sure he's delighted to see the progress. These two relatively new sliders. Song setting the pace for the second heat. Came down 56-61 in the first. Looks a little tidier slide. I wonder if she's gone for a tad more control in the second heat. And that is a 56-82. Also quite as quick. Probably hurt a bit less. Delco knows is watching with a beer and enjoying the action. Men had a good rest. Ying Chang claiming his third straight World Cup gold. Impressive season that the Chinese athletes have had. And for Song CG, first ever World Cup race, she makes the cut. And for the first time ever, she will head to the leader's box. It's the other way. So, second of our sliders then, 24th place, and just 500s ahead of Song is Julia Simshin from Switzerland. Julia, another of our young athletes, making her World Cup debut this season. This is her seventh World Cup race. She did not go to Beijing, but she's done every race since then. Race here in the NAC races to 18th and 26th place. Song was 14th and 22nd. So they should, in theory, have been maybe a bit ahead. But 68 for Yulia slices a tenth out of her start. Well, that's an impressive second run performance. Now let's see if she can build on that speed down the track. A little bit of uh, time in the first heat to dive herself in, but way late there. It's down at the bottom of the Devil's Highway before Shady. 12 13 crossover, not too bad. Out of Benham's bend. Shot the chicane nicely in the first heat, does so again. Only 200 up, not as quick though as Song CG. I think the Chinese slider might pick her off. It looks like she's going to. Simpson again hits the wall before the line. 200s back. So 56 8 9 compared to 56 5 6 in the first heat. She'll slip a spot. So her very first World Cup race, Song CG, not only makes the cut in a big field on a tough track, but also picks off the very first of her rivals. Big looping out there, a foot almost up there on the roof. For Yulia Simpson. 
That was eight into nine. And again, through the chicane. Getting those levers all the way out there. There was still a big smile on her face. Third generation slider making it into the World Cup. Huge smile on the face always. Anja Unterscheider, just 20 years old. First time here in North America. 15th in race one in the NAC a couple of weekends ago and 31st in the second. Only her sixth World Cup start. Made her debut in La Plan, where she finished 21st. That remains her best World Cup result so far. 23rd after the first of our two heats. 5.69 away, so a fraction slower than the two we've just seen, who are both 5.68s. So shoulder tuck nice and low down. A bit of counter steering between three and four. Whipping through the Devil's Highway. Whoa, and again, that big late eight nine transition. Out of Shady, too. And after one of the most fearsome corners in bobsledding, the original Shady 12 13, rocking and rolling into Benham's Bend. A couple of hard hits on the chicane. And he's not going to be smiling quite so broadly. Still in the green, but not now. She's going to drop behind both of her two rivals. 57-1-8, she loses two spots. Song CG still leads. Julia Simpson was only 200s behind her. And she remains in second as Anya Unterscheider slips a couple of spots. On the first half of the Czech Republic. There is the exit of three on the run down to four. That right leg coming out the toe steer to avoid the sled skidding sideways. And offline here. Again, put nearly up against the roof there. Not quite as high as Julia Simpson. 12-13. Pretty brutal crossover. Oh, well, whatever. Next up with Leslie Stratton holding the sled, Anna Fernstedt, one of her long-time sliding friends. Two tenths in hand, in fact, a quarter of a second in hand over our current lead at Song CG from the first heat. Let's see what she can produce. 560 first up, 565 loses a bit of ground, but still quicker than the three athletes who preceded her. She adds to her first heat advantage over Song CG by just 300s. Now out to 5300s up. Best result on this track, a fourth place finish as a German slider on her debut here. Little Rocky out of 12. On a bad chicane, at better speed than the others. Seventh and eleventh she was in the two NAC races. So, really surprised to see her struggling so far down outside the 20. But a 55.88. That is a much better run. That is 3,800s quicker than her first heat. 55.88 would have seen her 50, not 20 seconds. That is a much more Anna Fernstedt type of run. A big smile on her face. I'm sure that felt better. Final race of the World Cup season. And goes out with a better second heat. I think that's going to see her move up a few spots. OK, it's not going to be an all-time best. But it's all part of the learning process, developing this new sled of hers. Thanks for watching. Until next season. <laughs> so now that we get to our second Chinese slider, Xu Yanqi, a tenth ahead of Anna Fernstedt after the first of our two heats. 12th best start, 21st at the bottom. Whereas Anna came from the 23rd fastest start, the 22nd at the bottom. 
So Zhu is going to need to produce something. She's coming out of the right-hand start groove. These are quite straight going down into turn one. 5.37 getaway. So she definitely adds enormously to her advantage over Anna Fernstedt with that start. Outstarting Anna by nearly three tenths of a second. But the gas already coming down a whisker. 3,800 at the start, wild there as well. Down to 1,700s at Shady and in trouble. Not clean on to 11. Flying off 12 and 13. Ooh, look out. Hits everything in the chicane. And only the fifth best speed. This is going entirely the wrong way for Shu. Oh, she'll have been hoping to improve, maybe just overdriving in a fraction, 56.93. She drops to second place. She'll be the better of the two Chinese sliders. Three tenths ahead of Song CG. But she slips into second place as we get to the final 20 sleds. It was a, a different looking run to the first one. I wonder whether maybe she made adjustments to the sled to try and reduce the contact patch, give her a little bit more speed. Doesn't seem to have had quite the control that she needed to hang on to that position. <laughs> Big smile on her face. So Hu in her fourth World Cup start, lying in second place. Into the top 20, final run of the BMW IBSF women's skeleton season. And the first of our 33 starters in the field comes up immediately after the 33rd starter. This is Aileen Peltman's top 20 run in the first heat. Her best ever result, a pair of 21st places in her two in her six previous World Cup starts, all of which have been this season. Little tap there. Travels and trains with Kimberly Boss. 900s in front. The gap over Anna Fernstedt is coming down. She would love a top 20, not a 21 again. Of course, if she's right with Fernstedt, they might possibly both move up the order. Tied with Fernstein as she comes through the chicane. 200s back, second best speed, but Anna was fastest at the bottom. Coming up curve, nice. Whatever else she and her sled have done, Anna Fernstein has produced decent speed at the bottom of the run. It's going to be second at the line for Elena Peltmans, and Anna Fernstein will be in the top 20. Well, it'll be no worse than 21st for Elena Peltmans which will be tying her PB as Mike Rogals goes down to help with the sled in the orange jacket through the chicane, though. Got spat off Benham's bend over to Slider's Rot. Too much of a touch, a little bit of tap darting going on, a little bit of skidding. She kept her speed on board pretty nicely. And always with the big smile. Next up, Nicole Silveira of Brazil. Now, Nicole currently lying in seventh place in the Pan Am title uh, championship race. And she is 1400s behind sixth place Hallie Clark. Pan Am is for North and South American and Caribbean sliders. Currently led by a race leader, Mystique Rowe. Now Nicole was just 200s ahead of Aileen Peltmans, but two tenths ahead of Anna Fernstedt. She had a very uncomfortable looking first heat. 5.55 getaway. And it's a three tenths advantage over the slider from the Czech Republic, which takes a big hit exiting three. Another Bromley slider. This is a smoother looking run from Nicole Silvera. Long skid there. 
Down through the labyrinth. Oh, an uncomfortable 12 to 13, but better speed than we saw from Anna Bernstedt. Oh, the gap remains alive. She should have enough to the line. 2200s in front through the chicane. Enough speed. No! Yes. Big intake of breath all the way around. That long skid uphill out of 19 to the finish line. There went the hundreds that cost her the lead. Well, Nicole Silvera slips into second place and Anna Fettenstedt leads with 18 to go. Again, look at the sled, very sideways. And here, exit 12 to 13. Uncomfortable and sliding all the way out of 19. Look how sideways that is. The blue stripe on the wall further back. That was the finish line. Well, today is the birthday of great Brazilian hero Ayrton Senna, or would have been. He would have been 64 today. But uh, not bringing luck to Nicole Silvera. Now then, what about Freya Tarbit? 27 hundreds ahead for Anna Fernstedt from the first heat. Freya started sixth fastest, 529. Not experienced on this track at all. Race here twice, March last year. The silver and a bronze, and this year finished 14th and 7th in the NAC races a couple of weeks ago. Only her eighth World Cup. And her first World Cup encounter here at Lake Placid. Still with nearly six tenths, but only the fourth best speed. Little better through 12 and 13, the last two or three sleds we've seen. What's the gap? Four tenths. Surely that should be enough to stay ahead of Anna Fernstedt. As long as she can remain relatively clean. The fourth best speed wasn't great, but it was enough. But oh my goodness, only just 300s. She went from 6,800s ahead to 300s ahead. 56-12 off a 5.32 start. Well, that is her maiden World Cup season done and dusted. Freya Tarbit, her eighth World Cup race, not all of them this season. But she has completed the better part of the full year. Didn't race in Beijing. Best result this year, 10th place in Segulda. And her actual best result was in the one-off race in Winterberg last season, where she finished seventh. Her very first World Cup result, still her best. Now then, what about the world champion, Hallie Clark? Let's see what she's got for us in this final run of her first season as a Canadian slider in World Cup. It's her second World Cup season, but last year she flew under the Star Spangled Banner as an American. 5.52. So she dropped 600s off her start. 5.46 in the first heat, 5.52 in the second. And it did not look like a slider who knows this track in the first run. And it's not really looking like a slider that knows this track in the second run either. What's going on with Hallie Clark, the world champion? Pan Am Junior Champion this year. Raced last year in the World Cup to finish 18. She was in the Youth Olympic qualifiers here in 2019. She's done NAC races here as well. Only finished 20th and 24th here a couple of weeks ago. But this is a better bottom part of the track, 55-77. The top half did not look tidy. But after the Devil's Highway, she was back on track. And 55-77 would have left her 12th in the first heat and not 16th.
Well, now that means that the woman with whom she was tied, Tina Herman, that's her mum, met them at the family and friends in Winterberg. Her dad wasn't there to see it. Somebody's got to stay home and keep the home fires burning and earn the money, her mum said. That's tough on her dad, isn't it? How many times do you see your daughter get a chance to become world champion? But yeah, you know. All right, so Tina Herman needs that improvement to try and hang on to third in the overall standings. She has no hundreds of a lead over Hallie Clark because they were tied to the hundred. Hallie started 5.46, Tina 5.65. But Tina, as always, made her speed lying down rather than running. Now, let's see what she can do. 5.65 getaway, exactly the same as in the first heat. The sled looked like it was just skidding around a little bit under her. To my uneducated eye. Twenty-five hundreds behind Hallie Clark. Oh boy, she needs a good run here, but she gets a very uncomfortable exit. And again, twelve to thirteen is untidy. She's not making any inroads. The gap is growing. Tina Herman is going backwards. He may drop behind for a target at this race. And across the line, she is second tied with Freya Tarbit. And that is any hope of a third base finish gone, I think, for Tina Herman. Unless Valentina Margaglio crashes, finishes last, Tina is out of the top three and will not get one of the Crystal Globes this season. Well, she's won twice this year. She won in Beijing. She crushed them in Altenburg. Didn't get to go to the World Championships. Was not chosen for the team. And statistically, actually with her results, this is one of her worst seasons ever. And yet she's won two She's won a quarter of the races. The ones she hasn't won, those have been the troublesome ones. Well, from Tina Herman, four-time world champion, we move immediately, and we're still only just in the top 15 for Olympic champion Hannah Neiser. All right, we're in the middle of the quad. We're two years away from the next games. This is... A year out from the World Championships here, and the Germans will learn, need to have learned a lot from this before next year. 5.49 start in the first heat, 5.47 in the second. She had 600s over Hallie Clark. She still has 600s, but look at the tap dancing. The feet are on the ice, dragging all the way behind her. The wind is gone, the snow is gone. The ice is just as fast and bumpy, and she's somehow creeping away. If she gets a clean chicane, she might. But the gaps come back down in Benham's Bend. 400s up in the chicane, only six best speed. She's not going to get there. Skids across the line, 100 back. Hundreds slower than Hallie Clark. She was 100 quicker in the first heat. That's the difference. The Olympic champion slips a spot. Well, any of these errors will have taken speed, all of them will have taken speed out of the sled. Any of them on their own, had they not happened, would have been enough to keep her in front. There's no hiding from the boys in the EVS desk. They spot all the mistakes. All right, so Hannah Neiser slips a spot. Next up, 
is Italy's Alessandra Fumigali. Now, Alessandra did not come here before this season. 17th and 20th in the two NAC races. Coach Philly Schneider seems to have got a decent setup going here today for the Italian men and women. He builds their sleds, he advises them on setup, on runner choice for the conditions, and helps with the coaching. 5.31. And job he did, leading to Beijing with China. And got job Dirk Matchins is now doing with China. Ooh. Hard on the take on. 1900s up, the gap's coming down. Alessandra lost ground all the way down in the first heat. 10th best start, ended up 14th at the bottom. 9th best speed. She's going behind Harry Clark and Hannah Neiser. They're effectively one because they're only 100th apart. 9th best speed. She's going to sink like a stone. Four, five places back, six places back. He's down to seventh, Alessandra Fumigali. Could not get the lines that she wanted to work for her. See the exit here, straight into a skid. Right foot comes out. And again here, straight into a skid and into the wall. This is early on when there's no speed in the sled. You can't make those mistakes. Everybody does, but the worse they are, the more speed it takes out. Again here, out of Benham's Bend, down into the chicane. Pinball Wizard hits on both sides. Not the worst. See you next year. done. <laughs> See you in zigzags. So from one Italian to another, this is Alessia Gripper. Alessia, 23, youngest of the trio, eighth in race one, 34th in race two in the NAC weekend a couple of weeks back. Five thirty-two getaway for Alessia, five twenty-eight in the first heat. Not finding quite as much speed at start. Career best result, 11th place in the plan, but she's having an absolute nightmare at the bottom of the Devil's Highway. Zigging when she should have zagged, and the speed has absolutely vanished. Slowest sled so far. Now she's starting to bring it back a bit, but... 37 hundreds back from three tenths up. And like her teammates, she has also dropped like a stone. She too drops to seven. Oh, what a disappointment for the two Italians. Only 600s quicker than Alessandra Fumigali. She was only 500s quicker than her in the first heat. And both of them unable to recapture that first heat form. And again, you can see so much of her. Look, see how sideways she is. She should be coming straight towards us. And there again, late on, late off, skidding off, bouncing in the air, thrown up in the air off the sled. <laughs> Let's see <laughs> Yep. Next season it'll be the world's a bit four hits of this. Now then, Kelly Delka, Puerto Rico. Again, in the battle for honors in Panam. He's currently lying in fifth behind three Americans and a Canadian. But will she stay ahead of another Canadian? Are currently the Harry Clark. 
Can he stop the plenty of experience on this track, pre and post season, as well as regular season races? She was a US slider and since for Puerto Rico. 13 North America's Cup and ICC races here. Three World Cups in addition to that. Ninth and stepped in the QNEC race this a couple of weeks ago. Best speed of all for Kenny Delka. Slenderest of leads over Hay Cog. Huge to Chicane beautifully. Night run from Kelly Delka. Somehow found the money to come and compete and in making it worthwhile. 55-55. Great second run from Kelly. 23 hundreds better than her first. That is superb. So for those sponsors who have stumped up the money to allow her to race here. The final World Cup of the season. That is a great run. She had a good first heat, a really good second heat. Kelly Delka, a 35-year-old from Puerto Rico. Only her 23rd World Cup race. Hey, everybody back home. I'm ready for summer. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, rub it in, why don't you? Sheesh. The rest of us have got months to go till summer comes. All right, here we go. Heading towards the top 10 now. 11 to go as we get to Suzanne Crea, last year's world champion. Raced here in 2019 and 2020 in the Intercontinental Cup. Raced here in 2022, last season in the World Cup. And Suzanne is the silver medalist behind winner Tina Herman. Well, Tina Herman ain't going to win it. And Suzanne is not going to get a silver today. But a 5.37 start. 400s quicker than her first. Now again, in the first heat, she looked like she could not stop the sled skidding. This is a little better. Building her advantage over Kelly Delka. She was only 500 quicker than Kelly at the bottom of the run. And that advantage is now shrinking and she is losing control of the sled. At the highest speed, it's skin more. Only the fourth best speed, 1300 up. Delka was fastest and cleaner through the chicane. This is going to be tight, but I'm not sure that Suzanne Gray has got it at the line. She does not. She drops to second. Kelly Delka leads, 10 to go. Kelly's best ever World Cup result. 13th place in Innsbruck. Her best World Cup result in Lake Placid, a 14th place. Kelly Delka has currently got a best ever World Cup run going, and Suzanne Crea could not stop her. And look at the way again, the sled is skidding, she's guiding the nose, but the rest of it is not following. Does not have the control she needs on this hard, rattly surface. Slips a spot. Gets a congratulatory oh, hug from Hannah Neiser, or commiseratory, I guess. They're not having a great time. In the top ten, then, with Jane Channel, currently lying in fourth place in the Pan Am standings. Let's see what Jane can produce. Silver medalist at Push Worlds here last year. Finished 13th in the World Cup race. Right now, 10th place after the first heat. And half a second up on Kelly Delka. Knows this track so well. Grew up learning to slide in Calgary. Knows North American tracks well from her earliest days. And has always been competitive. Eight for speed, gaps coming down. Not by much. 
Keith and Chicane, fourth best speed. Still four tenths up. Our leader will be Jane Channel. Chin dragging on the ice across the line by five hundreds. Wow. 55.72, the same downtime as Suzanne Crayer. The difference is she had another 500s in hand over Kelly Delka. Oh, my goodness. Well, Jane starting 5.25. Long toast here before she even got to turn one. Doesn't have the cleanest of chicanes. Kelly Delco of Puerto Rico was cleaner, but it's Channel who leads with nine to go. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll find out in two sleds whether or not she gets a medal in the Pan Am Championships. Janine Flock doesn't count for that. She competed in the Europeans a few weeks ago. But Janine Flock in her 104th World Cup race, fifth in both N80 races a couple of weeks ago. Ten races on this track. She's got two gold two silver and two bronze medals. So she's got a better than 50%. In fact, she's got a 60% podium finishing record. Today, I think, is not going to help in that relationship. 2,500s back. Bring it back to Jane Channel of the 5.6 dark compared to 5.25 from Jane. She's only 400s ahead of Jane. Best speed of all. It's going to be close, but she should have it up. She does have it up. The new leader will be Janine Block. 55.59, only 700s. Slower than her first heat. Big smile from Andy Schmidt. Well, Janine currently fifth in the standings. Missed the race in the plan after breaking her nose. Two fourth place finishes in Innsbruck at home and in Lillehammer. She's not been on the podium this season and that ranks us probably one of her worst then in a long while. She's a former multiple World Cup champion. Janine Flock always super competitive. Well, looks as though she is going to finish this season without a World Cup medal. And probably to her next season as well. Now then, Styler Roderick for the USA in ninth place, in eighth place, I beg your pardon. Currently lying third in the Pan Am battle. Looking for a Pan Am bronze as well as a bit of an improvement here. 5.30 starts, she is it down to 5.29. Friends and family cheering her off at the top. 3,200s ahead of Ginny Flock. She was 100 in front at the line. This needs to be super clean, top draw start from Sarah Roderick. She's giving away a vast amount of experience anywhere from here as well. He's done 10 World Cup races alone on this track. Tara in only her eighth World Cup start. Still in the green. Too close to call. No! 1300s back. Where did that go? Well, she remains in second place. There are only two Pan Am sliders ahead of her. So she drops behind Janine. She will record a top 10 finish and she will be a Pan Am bronze medalist at least. 
hopefully nobody will fall down through the wires, this time with the sled. Uh, her best ever World Cup result in the previous seven outings, 15th place in San Moritz. She's blown that out of the water. She will have a top 10. She will be no worse than ninth. And now, crunch time. If Valentina Margaglio remains where she is, she will be in third place in the overall season standing. She will take the Crystal Globe away from Herman. Tina Herman currently in eighth. Unless Valentina has an absolute disaster, she will overhaul the four-time world champion for points. 526, she was being just a fraction conservative there, but she cannot afford to be. She needs to do what she does best, which is attack the track. 62 hundreds off on Janine's block. And two more different runs if the hard press for Madden. Very loose and fast, Valentina. 46 hundreds up. Shoots the chicane beautifully. And that will guarantee her surely the lead of the line. And surely the Crystal Road, the third in the overall standings, at the line by four hundreds from Janine. 55 64 downtime. Is my maths right, Lily? Is it right? I think if Valentina finished no worse than seventh, Tina Herman had to be 12. And Tina is ninth at the moment with six to go. I think Valentina Margalio just earned herself the bronze crystal globe. Bounces off the wall from three on the run down to four. And look at this, almost clean through the chicane, just that tiny little ping off the wall. It's fish! <laughs> it's fished! Did they tell her? Does she know? Okay, six to go. Tabby Stoker from Great Britain, 23-year-old former trapeze artist. has raced once on this track. I don't mean one NAC weekend, I mean one <laughs> NAC race. She was 12th in the first of two races. Amelia Colton did the second. So Tabby, very little in experience, but as ever, bouncing with energy, 5.22. Second fastest start of the competition in the first heat. She matches it. This young woman may not have the experience of a Janine Flock or a Katie Ulander, but oh boy, can she feel what the sled is doing. And look at the way she's tidy down this track as well. 1200s up, only the eighth best speed. But Valentina was not electrifyingly fast down here either. Oh, here's the chicane hard, both sides. The gap was out of two tenths of a second. She'll be lucky if she's got two hundreds left at the bottom. Out of the heart, it's gonna be Valentina Margallo who holds the lead. And Janine Flock is second. Tabby Sturker drops to third with five to go. So she does not add to her medal tally. A disappointing chicane for her. And this is it. She comes off the wrong side of Benham's bend, hits out of Benham's and hits twice in the chicane. That's why she's going sideways, head buried. That's what the G-force is whipping late off Ben and Ben do to you. But look at the smile on her face. And there's Amelia Coltman helping at the back with the sled. Right, five to go. Valentina Margaglio leads from Janine Flock and Tammy Sturker. There is no safety net. Top three covered by 500s.
Jacka had two tenths in hand over Janine Flock. She had two hundreds in hand over Tabby Schurker and eleven hundreds over Valentina Margaglio. The three of them are covered by five hundreds of a second. It shows the vagaries of this sport. Can Jacqueline Lerling seal a top five result here? Jacqueline Pfeiffer, right, 5.52, four to have it. She finds an extra hundred from the first heat. Well, with the extended field this year, Jacka has been back in the World Cup for the first time in two seasons. She has not had a finish outside the top ten. She has not had a finish inside the top three. She has been a model of consistency. Through the chicane, best speed of all, and two turns up. It's going to be a top five finish for, Val uh, for Jacqueline Pfeiffer ahead of Valentina Margaglio. 55-34. That is a huge run, only 200 slower than her first heat. And a 100 of a second improvement at the start. Hannah Neiser applauding from the wall. Suzanne Crayer will be there to greet her as well. Great final race of the season for Jacka Pfeiffer. She comes out as the best of the four German sliders. Well, look at this going away through the chicane, the tiniest of touches. And she gets a little nudge on the wall, but the best speed of all below Benham's Bend. And they keep dropping it from the team because she can't start. Damn it, stop with that. Four to go. 2700s cover the top four. Katie Ulander, world champion 2012 in Lake Platted. World Cup winner 2004 and 2006. 2006, 2007 rather, in Lake Placid. Can she take another medal? On a return to the World Cup this season in Tamaric, she took a bronze to her own astonishment. Eight hundreds ahead of Jacqueline Pfeiffer. Needs more. She needs to go to that special KP place. Second best speed, Pfeiffer was quicker. Jack still 800, needs to shoot the chicane. Not the cleanest, but it is quick. Quicker than anybody so far. Katie Ulender stretching for the line, trying to get in the medals. 55-32. She leads with three to go. Is that enough? Well, she'll earn something that she's never earned in her entire career before now. And that is a Pan Am medal. She will be at least the silver medalist. Well, you have to help her with the high fives there. There you go, up on the short wall. A little rocking and rolling, 12 to 13. Didn't get the cleanest of runs through the chicane, but she had the highest speed coming in. Didn't rattle too much of it away. Added two hundreds of a second to her advantage, to the delight of Matt Antoine. Well, she came and she went. Yep, it'll get you, but three to go. No guarantee that they're going to shoot it straight either. Ulander leads. Kim Marmons of Belgium looking for another medal. Silver medalist in Segulda, that's her only trip to the podium this season, but she's been so consistent. 5.31 the getaway. She starts fast, Kim, and she builds speed down the track. She looks pretty much in control in the first heat. No major skids. Look at that, that was much cleaner than so many that we've seen at the bottom of the Devil's Highway. 
it's straight down the tubes out of Shady. 12 to 13, not too bad at all. 3,800s up. Fifth best speed. She's going to take the medal away from Katie Ulander. Will be Marmons at the line with the lead. 55-2-0. Just 300 slower than her first heat. Guaranteed a second medal of the season in Marmons. And that also guarantees her the silver crystal globe at the end of the season. And she came in here second in the points. And she remains in second in the points. A second medal to add to her tally. Best previous result on this track for Kim was eighth place a couple of years ago. What a season. See you next year. World Championship silver medalist. And she will be the runner up also in the season standings with Kimberly Boss with one to go after her. Still wears the yellow vest at the World Cup points leader. And she will take her second overall World Cup title. From the years where she was limping, literally almost walking off the line just to continue racing and keep her spot for the Netherlands in the World Cup, to becoming an Olympic medalist, a World Championship medalist, a World Cup title winner. What an uptick in her career over the last four years. Wild. 400s in the lead. She drops behind. It doesn't matter. Kim Marmons is not close enough to catch her. Oh, huge moment through the chicane. The most sideways we've seen. And she might drop behind Katie Ulander. How close is this going to be at the line? She's second. Kim Marmons leads one to go. Kimberly Boss is the World Cup champion. One wild loose ride. Down late flat, it does not matter. Mike Rogals takes the sled. Kimberly Boss takes the applause. It's enough. She'll be in the medals. And this year alone, she's had two gold and three bronze. She will, uh, two bronze rather. She will add at least a bronze to that. Currently lies second behind Kim Marmons. Dad and then called it again. It's fine. Hi, everybody. Thank you for your time And so finally, is this history in the making for Mystique Rowe? Last year, she came here and won the Push World Championships, but was not qualified for the USA's World Cup team. Did not race here. This is her first World Cup on US ice. She's got two silver medals and a bronze in her career. She won the first of the two NAC races a couple of weeks ago. She led off the first hit. Oh, that's a big hit though. 5.16, an astonishing start. 5.21 in the first heat. Misty Rowe. Is this going to be gold? Gap's gone out from three tenths at the start to 4,200s, down to 3,600s. Don't tighten up now. 1,800s at the chicane. It's going to be close. Has Misty Grove got enough to take the goal here in the classic? Will we have an American winner at the line? It is gold by 200s Missy 
fifth row takes her first ever World Cup win here in Lake Placid on American ice in front of an American crowd. And she's <laughs> slightly perplexed by it all. And exhausted as well. 5.21, the fastest start in the first heat. She blew out a 5.16 second run getaway. Our push world champion is the quickest starter in the field again. And the emotion is going to get to her. And there's Hallie Clark reaching out a hand for her, I think. Mystique Rowe. Our World Cup winner, the first gold of her career. Two silver medals in La Plan and Lillehammer, a bronze in Altenburg. And now her fourth medal of the season is a gold on the top step at home Amazing. in the season for Ali. Hey, if you can't get emotional with your first win, especially on home ice, when can you get emotional? There is a lot of pent-up tension going into these races. You try and dispel it because tense means slow on a sled. You've got to be loose. Your body's got to act like a shock absorber, damping out the vibrations. And it doesn't when you're tense, but inside the head. Mystique Rowe held it together. Kim Marmons takes the silver. Kimberly Boss, the bronze, ahead of Katie Ulender, who takes Pan Am silver. And the Pan Am bronze medal goes to Sarah Roderick in ninth place. Just ahead of Jane Channel, Kelly Delka and Hallie Clark, their four, fifth and sixth, the wider podium in the Pan Am battle. Ahead of Brazil is uh, Nicole Silveira. And then behind her, we have the USA's Michelle Tokan and Colombia's Laura Vargas. But our World Cup champion is the woman who came here with the yellow jersey on her back. For the second time in her, in her career, Kelly Boss is the World Cup winner. She takes gold, Crystal Globe. Kim Marmons takes the silver and Valentina Margaglio moves up into third place. Janine Flock, I didn't count on that, moves up to fourth ahead of Tina Herman. Herman came here third, ends the season in fifth. She is the best of the German sliders, but narrowly ahead of Jacqueline Pfeiffer. Jackie did not do the first race of the season. Well, the German men struggled today. The German women largely struggled as well. There are the rest of our World Cup points scorers for the season. 42 different sliders Woo! in the women's field Thank over you. the course of the year. Well, there's your Thank otter. Thank you. That's utterly cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. I was avoiding the otter puns. Happy, happy. Hey. There you go, Mystique Road, Kim Marmons and Kimberly Boss. Gold, silver on the left, bronze on the right of your picture. With the otters? With the otters. There you go. I have no... Don't ask me. I don't know why otters. Who knows why otters? Well, that is it for Skeleton. The season is done. The champions are crowned. Congratulations to everybody who made it to the World Cup start line this season, to all our medalists and to everybody who achieved a personal best. And there's been a bunch of them here today. Well, that's it for today. We'll see you at 10 a.m. tomorrow, 1400 GMB for Monobot.
One, two, one, two. Can you all Ruby, Hope you all Yeah, okay. Misty, congratulations to your first World Cup win. We saw some tears at the end. Tell me, how was it? Uh, it's been a very emotional like last few weeks of the season, just dealing with injuries and just trying to keep it together and um, just bring it with the competition because it's always A plus competition with these girls. So you got to be on top of it all the time. Yeah, it was, I think, both great ones, first and the second one. Yeah, the first run I definitely was more dialed in. The second run I kind of started my warm up a little too early, so I was kind of idle a little bit, so I kind of got a little distracted. So, yeah, I clinched it at the end just barely, but I'm, I'm happy that I was able to pull it together for two runs full. And what's next? Some celebrations? Uh, yeah, maybe zigzags. Who knows? Like the guru. So um, but I'll be back here at the mound tomorrow to help support bobsled, um, just get some content and support Team USA. Okay, thank you so much.